Hello, church family. I hope you are enjoying the goodness and the kindness of the Lord this week. Hey, you know, it's been over eight months since we have celebrated communion together in our weekend services, and it's going to change this weekend. We're going to celebrate communion together on Saturday night and both of our services on Sunday. We thought it would be good first, though, to remind one another what the purpose of communion, communion is and uh, who it's for. And I thought it might be helpful to present a little illustration of marriage. I've been a husband for over 40 years, and I know the importance of not forgetting my wedding anniversary. It wouldn't quite cut it if our, on our anniversary I did nothing special for Nancy, and I simply remembered verbally and mentally acknowledged that day and how good I looked in my powder blue tuxedo and how beautiful she looked. She wouldn't say, how thoughtful. I'm glad you didn't forget all those details. You see, we don't remember a wedding anniversary by stating the facts. Nancy might rightly expect that the concept of remembering our anniversary involve a layer of activities such as me maybe writing a note or taking her to dinner or uh, buying her a small gift. Rightly remembering our covenantal promise causes me to pursue her, to cherish her, and to love her afresh like I vowed to on that wedding day. Not forgetting is more than simply remembering. In our Western culture, remembering means recollecting or recalling to mind something that is no longer a present reality. However, in the Bible, a call to remember is a vibrant, powerful, and participatory concept where we recalibrate our lives according to what's being remembered. Remembering what Christ accomplished on the cross reminds us of the present and future reality that we have been purchased and our lives are no longer our own. We are his and he is ours. On the night before Jesus died, he recast the ancient Jewish Passover meal. The inaugural Passover occurred when God sent the angel of death to, death to pass over the entire land, killing the firstborn male of every household. To escape this judgment, Israelites were commanded to sacrifice an unblemished lamb for each household and to smear the blood of that lamb on the doorposts of their homes. When the angel of death saw a home with sacrificial blood over its doorposts, he passed over that home. It was the blood of a spotless lamb that turned away the judgment of God from a particular house. During the exodus from Egypt, the Lord commanded Israel to remember their flight and their deliverance from Egypt with a special Passover meal. The first Lord's Supper was a Passover meal that according to Mosaic law, God's people should celebrate it annually as a reminder that God had delivered them from slavery out of Egypt. The Lord's Supper refined the Passover meal as a celebration of God's second and greater act of redemption, secured through the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross. The sacrifice of Jesus, the true and better unblemished lamb, atoned for the sins of all who would trust him for salvation. Jesus' death then established a new covenant between God and his people, a covenant whose central focus was the forgiveness of sins in a right relationship with God. For believers, remembering God's establishment of this new covenant of forgiveness and acquittal from sin should result in a joyful freedom from sin's destructive influence. Remembering Jesus' death is not simply remembering his sacrifice, but it's a time of recalibration, remembering that we belong to him, we're part of his body, and as a result, we're to live in joyful submission to him and in unity with his body, the church. Therefore, the communion table is only for those who have trusted in Jesus' sacrifice for the forgiveness of their sins and who by faith identify with his body, the church. If you've not placed your faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, we welcome you to participate in all aspects of our worship service, but we would ask that you not participate in the communion table. Additionally, if you profess faith in Christ and you've not yet been baptized, we want to welcome you to Christ's family. And if you would tell one of the pastors or your community group leader, it would be our pleasure to dunk you um, in baptism. When you arrive this weekend, take the individually packaged cup and wafer, and at the end of the service, we will remember Christ's sacrifice together. My hope is that as we come to the Lord's table, we would come with eagerness and expectancy, and that it would never become rote or dull, but a spiritual gospel experience. Love you, church family, and we'll see you this weekend.